What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Dominique. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you a natural glowy uh, spring makeup look that's a little fox eye inspired but not a true fox eye but these are just some new techniques that I have learned that I think are really really beautiful for an everyday makeup look. Before we get started I want to jump into the big white elephant in the room which is these teeth. For those of you who don't know, for the longest time I have struggled with my teeth. I had a gap, I had two peg teeth, really skinny teeth next to my front teeth and Honestly, it was something that really bothered me for a long time. Once I became aware of how messed up my teeth were, I began covering my mouth and I laughed, smiling like this and avoiding showing my teeth at all costs because I realized people were noticing it and it honestly was just a really big source of insecurity for me. So I wanted to take the step in getting dental cosmetic surgery for me so that especially on my wedding day, which is in less than 40 days, I would be comfortable, I'd be confident and I'm so thankful to have a fiance who loves me how I am but supports me in doing this for me. So what I am doing is I am getting caps on six of my teeth and these right here are my temporaries so the reason why they're so big, big, big and clunky and opaque white is because they are actually made out of acrylic and it's just a quick solution uh, to cover up your teeth while they are making the real teeth in the lab in my last visit last Thursday they shaved down all my teeth to little tiny pegs cut back on the gum to make all the gum symmetrical because the gum was lower in some areas than others and Oh my god, it hurt. It hurt. Honestly, the Novocaine is what hurt. The Novocaine. I didn't feel anything else because of all those shots of Novocaine. But once the Novocaine faded, like, even even now, my mouth is sore. It kind of hurts when I bite. But all that will go away eventually. So essentially, these giant things in my mouth right now are just to cover up those little stumps that are in my mouth currently uh, until my real teeth come in. So I'm super, super excited for this journey. I hope these bright, bright teeth aren't too distracting during this video. I know it's kind of obnoxious, but bear with me. Soon enough, I'll have hopefully the smile of my dreams and I'm super, super excited about it. If you guys want to hear more about that dental cosmetic surgery journey, uh, comment below. I'd love to share it with you as I go along and even do a review of how it was and show everyone the finished products. This is like the halfway product. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Without further ado, let's get into how I created this glowy, bronzy spring makeup look. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by prepping my skin with the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Moisturizer. And I'm actually going to be mixing that in with my jojoba oil. So for those of you who don't know, jojoba oil is a natural oil that mimics um, in composition the natural oil of the skin and pretty much tricks the skin into not producing more oil, that type of oil that causes acne. So what this is going to do is it's going to prevent my skin from becoming more oily than usual um, throughout the day. And it's also going to be nice and uh, glowy under my foundation. Because remember with this look, I'm not going for that super mattified look. I'm going for a more natural satin glowy look. Um, something that you could wear every day and it looks like you're wearing makeup obviously this isn't one of those no makeup makeup look things <laughs> it'll still look like you're wearing makeup but um it's not going to be as heavy as usual but first before i go in and do the eye look i'm actually going to start off with my foundation first i'll be using the la girl pro matte foundation in the shade light tan because i do have a light tan at the moment um, what I love about this foundation is it's pretty lightweight it's pretty moussey almost like very smooth very silky the best way to describe it is satiny so although it says matte I would I would definitely describe it as more of a satin finish I'm gonna be dabbing it on my face it might look like I'm putting on a lot but I'm gonna be using a beauty blender which is gonna soak in a lot of it. And also you'll see, like this doesn't apply very heavy. It will be sort of a thin layer. Shout out to the beauty influencer, Casey Holmes, who like two years ago, I think, did a full coverage makeup look using this foundation 
and ever since then it's literally been one of my favorites it's so good and by the way it's available at Ulta for like I think six dollars it's something like absurdly cheap and it's so nice like this is like competitive with some high-end stuff it's really really great okay so now I'm gonna go on with my setting powder which is the revolution baking powder in the shade banana light so it's tinted slightly yellow because um, I am sort of tan and sometimes I find when I use the translucent white one when I take flash photos you can kind of see it and that could just be because my technique's terrible but I just like to avoid that entirely by using a tinted setting powder and also it, it kind of creates another layer of coverage which is really really helpful so what I'm doing here is I'm literally just taking this fluffy little brush and I'm just gonna put a little powder on my eyelid put too much I'm just gonna get rid of that <laughs> and again this is all a part of prepping and priming the eyelid so now that that's done we're gonna go for this semi foxy eye I'm not gonna say it's a true foxy eye because it's really not but the goal of this eye look is to widen and elongate the eyes and give that fanned out effect so for this look I'm using none other than the Too Faced Born This Way the Natural Nudes eyeshadow palette. This palette was gifted to me by my fiance for Christmas and it is absolutely stunning. Like the colors, hopefully it's in focus, are absolutely gorgeous. I use it quite a lot for my everyday makeup looks but also for my glam going out looks. It's so, so pretty. So I'm gonna start off with a medium dark color and then build to a darker color but the point is to concentrate the darker colors to the outer corner of the eye so it's going to go from light to dark and fan out you pretty much should be like this like this is the line we are following here from the corner of the nose to the eyelid to the eyebrow I am going to be taking my eyebrow out a little bit to right here to fit this this is all a part of creating that symmetrical fanned out look so to get started, I'm going to start out with this shade right here, Seashell. I'm going to go in with a sort of dense fluffy brush, tap off the excess. So now for the next step, we're going to be going in with the same brush, but with the color Coco. Am I on it? Yeah, with the color Coco. I always feel like one eye is coming out better than the other. Whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> so now I'm going to go in with the light shade. And for that I'm going to be using two colors. I'm going to be using Sparkling Sand and Glistening Snow. And for this I'm actually not going to be using a brush. I don't know if it's because of my brushes or just the pigments. But my brushes, whether I use synthetic or natural bristles, don't pick up the pigment as well as just using my finger. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go with my finger. And I'm going to do the darker, I guess it's like a rose goldy, no, bronze shade maybe? More bronze. Sparkling sand. And I'm going to go in with that with my finger. And I want to show you guys this pigment. Hopefully you can see that on the camera there. It is just so beautiful. So I'm gonna go in with my finger. I'm going to sweep it across the eyelid like so. Okay, now using a totally different finger, I'm gonna go in with the glistening snow, which is the lighter color, and this I'm gonna focus even more towards the inner corner of the eye. remember light to dark with that cocoa powder which is that deep 
mauve -y brown color. I'm going in again with it, but again, more concentrated. I don't really want it much darker than what it is now, but I do want it very pigmented. Now I'm going to be highlighting my brow bone using the Becca Cosmetics highlighter in Opal. I used to do a really, really bright um, highlight, like almost white, and it was so obnoxious, like so bright, like so, like this you'll see mostly when it hits the light. But I used to use a white sparkly one, like where you would see it so bright and in your face all the time. And I just love this because it's really that natural. You ever go to the beach and you're sun-kissed and a little oily and sweaty and just, mm, your skin's glistening in all the right ways. Like, that's what the highlighter does. Sorry, I'm moving around because I'm getting dead like sitting like this. <laughs> so I'm moving to try to like give my leg a break. Now it is time to do the eyebrows. I'm going to be using the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil. This is not my top pick. My top pick is the Precision um, eyebrow pencil from Benefit Cosmetics. I ran out of it, but I do have the other two that are in that little cute set. I'll be using these today, um, but unfortunately I ran out of the other one and I had to do a quick grab. It's okay. Um, it just takes a while to get the pigment and the color that I want. I don't know why. I guess it's just not as pigmented, the stick. You'll see what I mean as I go in and do them. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to be going in with, again, the Benefit Cosmetics. It's like an eyebrow gel, so it is tinted, and pretty much this gel is going to attach to my eyebrows and kind of like make each individual hair look thicker and fuller, and it's really cool. I love the effect that this has. And you just brush. You literally just brush up. That's what I'm going for. I want my eyebrows to be fluffy and stick up in the natural direction that they are supposed to go in. Next step isn't completely necessary, but I do need my eyebrows to last all day. And for that, I'm gonna be using the Benefit Cosmetics 24 Hour Brow Setter. And this is a clear gel. Um, it's kind of like putting on clear eyelash gel. So it's just gonna set it, put it in place. And let me tell you, I've gone in the water with this on and my eyebrows didn't move. Like this is, this is the real deal. You could just see, look at how it's like brushing them up. I hope you guys can see this. It's just creating such a nice effect on the brows. Like, mmm, love it. For my eyeliner, I'm going to be using the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus Liquid Liner. Honestly, as long as your liquid liner has a pretty fine point, I feel like you could do any eyeliner look and as long as it's like the blackest black that's super important too so i'm just gonna shake this really quick and for this eye look with the eyeliner remember we're making everything look fanned out so i'm actually not going to start my eyeliner in the inner corner everything is concentrated and focused to the outer part of the eye so i'm going to be starting my eyeliner pretty much halfway through the eyelid if not three quarters maybe you'll see, and I'm going to fan it out and do a nice wing. For my mascara, I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect, which is pretty relevant for what we're trying to do right now. Um, if I was doing a look without putting on fake eyelashes, which is what I usually do, I don't always, I only wear lashes for special occasions. I'm not going to be applying full eyelashes. This technique honestly changed my life and made me made my eye makeup look so much nicer. So instead of having the whole lash band going across your whole eye, I have cut my eyelashes in half and I'm only going to put them on the outer part of the eye so that the density of my lashes is more towards the outside. Again, fan effect. And for these lashes, I'm actually, actually using this set of Ardell Wispies, the Demi Wispies. For my lash glue, um, this I just bought at Rite Aid or CVS, a store like that, and it is just duo eyelash glue, and it's actually black. Okay, so me personally, 
I think the clear you still see and you see like blotches of it and I just don't think it's cute so I prefer to use the black because it just ends up drawing black and goes right in with your eyeliner so it just looks a lot better. I actually did my lashes off camera because <laughs> um, I don't know if it was heating up or whatnot, but it shut off. So I figured, let me just give it a chance to cool down and I'll finish the lashes off camera. So here they are, the lashes. Hopefully you guys can tell the fanned out effect that is occurring with the lashes only being on the outside. And if you're feeling like my bottom lash line's looking a little bare, don't worry, it's just because I'm not there yet, but we are going to get there. So I'm going in with the Tarte Shape Tape. What else would I be using in the shade 20S Light Sand? So typically, for a full coverage look, what I've done in the past is I've done the giant triangle and I've layered it on and packed it on. But for a look like this, I'm going to be going much, much lighter. And what I'll be doing is putting a little bit in the middle between my brows, down like this, Lining the eye look on the chin and beneath the halls of my cheekbones to carve that out. And just like with the foundation, I will be using the Beauty Blender to blend it all out. Typically I would bake, which if you don't know what baking is, that's when you go in with your setting powder and slam it on that face, layer it up thick. You can see it, it's just piled on and then you let it sit there and soak in. So that it pretty much creates a layer of powder so that if you sweat or get greasy, get oily, um, it'll soak it up. And it kind of makes your makeup last longer in that way. But for this more natural look, I'm not going for that super mattified look. But however, I still do need to set my makeup. So I'm going in with very light powder. And instead of sweeping it on thickly, I am just going to be packing it into my skin. Packing it in. For this more natural look, we are not going to be contouring or cream contouring especially at all. We're not going for that super carved out and chiseled look. We are going for glowy, bronzy skin. So, instead of using cream contour, I'm going to be going in with my Morphe Face Palette in the shade 8T, which is totally tan. And in this palette are a few different bronzing and contouring shades as well as some blushes, which I will also be using. So for this, we're going to go in with the angled brush, and I'm using the first bronzer right here. And we're going to, remember, light to dark. Once you go dark, you can't go back. So you want to start light so you don't overdo it. And I'm going to be starting slightly higher than the natural hollow of my cheeks and doing upward strokes. And this is essentially going to give the face a facelift. A mistake a lot of people make that I used to make for a long time is I would bronze too low and it would sort of make my face look droopy. And droopy is not cute, right? We don't want droopy. droopy. No one ever liked a droopy face since the history of the world. So let's not make our face look droopy. So we're gonna start a little high and we're gonna brush up. Because we don't want it to fall below the hollow of the cheek. You're giving yourself a little facelift. And I'm also going to essentially just line the rest of my face, just sweep it over give me some bronze, put back the color the foundation took away from me because I do have sort of a glowy tan right now to a certain extent. And don't forget from that photo that is a warning to all women to <laughs> undo the jawline. You have to get under the jawline. It's a necessity. 
What's you look like me? Like you have no jaw and your face will go right into your neck and you look like a freak. I'm going to be contouring my nose slightly, nothing too dramatic using this fluffy brush. And I'm gonna be using the same bronzer color I just used. Now to make this look, look more natural, I'm gonna start down here. Not on the side. Okay, if you start too much on the side, you're actually, your nose is gonna look wider because the top is gonna look wider. So you actually almost wanna start towards the top, like towards the highest point of your nose and bring it all the way up for a more natural look and then bend it out here. So I'm on the tip of the nose. This is very subtle. Honestly, I don't even know if you'll notice it on the camera because it's very subtle. Everything about this look isn't dramatic, it isn't harsh. It's all thinned out and thought out. Be mixing these two. This one's more of a matte one. This one has a little bit of a shimmer. Blush is a step that I really used to skip before I realized just how much life it brings to the face. Also, you guys pack the blush on pretty, pretty dramatic. Like it, you, it should be very, very visible because blush is going to get washed out very, very fast. Like probably by the time you leave the house, I leave the house, this is gonna be knocked down like two tones. So when you're initially doing your makeup, this might look really bizarre to you, but layer it on kind of thick. Now I'm going to be taking my fluffy brush and just blending it all out like so. Again, I'm, I wanna avoid any types, any type of harsh lines, I'm just gonna Brush everything out, make sure it's blended together. I'm just gonna be emphasizing that inner corner. Nothing too crazy. The top of my nose, Cupid's bow. And then with my finger, I'm going to be highlighting my cheekbone. I just feel like the finger is the best applicator there is. Um, because you can control the pigment and then I'll just use a brush to fan it out and make it look more natural but I feel like my finger definitely picks up the best amount of pigment. Now finally the last touches which don't neglect it ladies this will transform your eye look the bottom lash line people forget about it and then the eyes just look so washed out at the bottom. So don't forget to do your bottom lash line. I'm gonna be using this pointy brush. I'm going back in with this darker shade cocoa. It's on the tip. I'm just going to line it. Again, I'm not going all the way to the inner corner because this is a look, if you haven't guessed it, it's fanning out. <laughs> I think I've said the word fan and fanning like 10,000 times. These are like the little things we can't forget. That is all for today. Thank you guys so, so much for walking. <laughs> guys, <laughs> that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I did do my lipstick off screen. I It, was, it is Kylie Cosmetics Commando and the NYX Natural Lip Liner. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you like this makeup look and that you'll try it out for yourself. And I just hope to see you next time in my next video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.